Welcome back to my show, guys, Triggered. Today, we're gonna be getting into some fitness content. A lot of you have followed me through my fitness journey. Um, a lot of you guys probably found me on my Instagram, Lauren Drain Fit or Lauren Drain Fitness. So I just thought I would get into my, how I got into fitness, why did that become a love and a passion of mine? How did I become like a NASM certified personal trainer? I obviously have other history. I've been a nurse for over 10 years. So how did I pivot from like nursing to fitness? And what was that whole journey along the way? Um, I got into competing, as many of you guys know, but I thought I would kind of just tell you guys that story. So let's just get right into it. Um, I also thought I would share with you guys that I have not always been confident with my body. So I'm sure many of you guys follow me for you know, maybe like fitness training inspo or motivational inspo, but I was not always the so confident in my body. So when I was younger, Growing up in high school, you know, the age when no one's really like feeling themselves too much, I despised muscles on myself. I I absolutely hated biceps, shoulders. I was told by other people in school, like other kids in class, they'd be like, oh, do you weight lift? You have manly arms. You have like really big biceps and shoulders. And I, I just remember being like instantly humiliated by the fact that my arms stood out because I didn't weight lift and I was just genetically... I don't know, genetically b born with delts and biceps naturally. So I remember thinking, oh my God, I need to cover up my arms. Like I'm not a man. I don't want anyone to think I'm a man or that I like am trying to look manly. So back then it was just very, very, very discouraging about my body style. So um, I obviously now have, have embraced muscles and kind of embraced what my natural body kind of ends up looking like and kind of ends up, you know, just, just kind of trying to embrace it. But that wasn't until way, 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 way later. Not until I was like 28 plus did I even remotely enjoy how I naturally was built. Um, I, yeah, I just remember growing up in school and I was like, oh my God, how do I get rid of this? I would just try to cover them up. Or even my legs, I had more built legs too. And I just thought, oh, I, I was really envious of all the girls that had like a Barbie body, you know, like the really stick arms, like no definition, no fat, nothing. It's just like a stick. And I remember thinking, how do I get that? How do they get that? Obviously it's genetics, but you know, as a kid, you don't really, you don't really understand that. Yeah. So that's how I felt about my body. I also felt like I had no chest. This is pre uh, breast augmentation. So I had no chest, no hips, uh, this manly figure. And I was just like, how do I feel like an, a confident, sexy woman when I don't feel like I look like a woman? I feel like other people don't even think I look like a woman. So yeah, going, growing up, any or any of my teens all the way through my 20s actually probably not until I was like 27 28 did I ever even feel remotely confident I did get a breast augmentation in my 20s I think I was like 23 or 24 um, that helped significantly with my my confidence to feel womanly to feel feminine um, so I totally understand why women do certain things to enhance themselves and then after I got my breast augmentation, I, I started working out. So this is where it, this is where it started. I remember I was scrolling on Instagram, the very, very beginning of days of Instagram. I'm sorry, it was only like maybe two or three years out. I, it was back in like 2013. And I remember scrolling and I saw this one beautiful girl who had a six pack of abs. She was ripped, she looked beautiful, in a bikini on stage. And I just saw her photo and I was like, how does, how does one go get these abs? I don't understand. So I remember seeing her and I was like, okay, how do I get a body like that? And I just was attracted to it. And I remember seeing her caption and her caption said, um, I got this in 12 weeks on a fitness training program with my coach. And I was scrolling through and I was like, oh my gosh, I've never done a diet. I've never done a training program like this. I, I was just like, okay, I need to do some research. Mind you, I always kind of had like a skinny fat body. So it was like, I was probably like 140 pounds, 5'5". Five, five, and just no, just no like abs, you know, kind of a, kind of a flat tummy but I never felt like super fit and I, I didn't really like my butt. So I was just like, I need to do something to work out to feel a little more confident. So during this training, I also saw, okay, not only can you build abs, you can build a butt, you can look more feminine, more sexy. And I was just like, yes, this is what I want. So I looked at this girl's body and it was like a dream goal. And I'm like, in 12 weeks, you can achieve that. Going from like, she had the same body, a skinny fat to like a bit, somewhat built butt or at least a bigger butt than, than what she had started with. And I was like, that's insane. I'm going to try this. So I went around researching. I think I found a girl in on Facebook or something who had done a local competition. I was living in, a, uh, I'm sorry, I was living in Connecticut at the time. And I found this girl who was living in Connecticut. So local to me, I contacted her. I asked her who her coach was. And she's like, 
yeah, this is it. Like my coach trained me to do this in 12 or 15 weeks. And I was like, that's insane. I'm, I, sign me up. I'm ready to go. So I got the contact, contacted the uh, coach, and I was super amped to finally feel like good about myself, like have some confidence about my body, to achieve a goal, to feel strong and fit, and to actually like kind of feel like I I like the fact that I have muscles, you know? There was this like niche community of people where everyone's like looking up to you to have muscle growth and to have defined muscles, and it's actually like super attractive to them to even gain more muscle. So I was like, okay, I gotta go for this. So I sign up, I'm doing the thing, I get the diet, you know, it's kind of like you would expect. It's like rice, broccoli, chicken, tilapia, like, you know, I'd never heard of these diets before, but anyone that does research now, that's like the standard disgusting, you know, bodybuilder diet. And I was just amped because I was like, I'd never fallen a diet before. I'm talking, I had a skinny fat body, but I probably did like mac and cheese, grilled cheese, nachos and cheese, like basically a cheese diet. I never really followed anything strict. So when I saw this like regimented, like portioned out foods, you need to, you need to like, you need to weigh your food. You need to have regimented meals. You have to meal prep every week or meal prep twice a week. I was like, okay, this is a whole science. And I kind of like geeked out on it. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I know how to make this work. Like I have to put on a schedule. I have to figure out which days of the week I'm meal prepping, weigh out my food, put it in Tupperware, get it ready to go and then go to work. So mind you, at this time, I've been working at the hospital. I've actually was working at two different hospitals. And um, I was working 12 hour, three 12 hour shifts at one hospital at night. And then I was working, like I'd pick up extra overtime at a different hospital uh, the other days a week just to make more money. And I just remember I would work. So with, with night shift, I had to work out during the day right before I'd get to, to work. So my night shift was 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., three days a week and usually back to back. So what I would do is I would get up, I'd sleep during the day, I'd get up around like three or four, and I would either meal prep then, or I'd go straight to the gym, work out for an hour and a half, like five to 6.30 or four to 5.30, come back, meal prep. Now when I would meal prep, I would just make the food on the thing, weigh it out right there. It would take about like an hour max to make those three meals for the night. So I'd eat two meals in the morning, and then I would work out, come home, meal prep, make those three meals for the evening shift and bring them into work. Okay, so it's kind of like this thing I had to do every day. And I just started following this regimen and sure sure as hell, I, I got in insane shape. I'm talking, I went from 140 pounds skinny fat to 118 ripped. Like I had muscle, I had abs, I had quads, I had booty. Like in 12 weeks, it was just, I couldn't even believe. I should show you guys the, the first transformation, but I was super proud. So I did this show that I signed up for. I had this coach that I found online. You know, we both mostly did the online training and that's how I worked out. I didn't work out with him in person. I did all my own workouts. He, and uh, the only thing I didn't do though was I did not hire a posing coach. So when I signed up for the show, I kind of just found some random girls posing and I copied it from YouTube and I just started practicing it myself. So when I showed up to the show, which was my first ever show, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no stage presence. I was awkward. I was stiff. It was my, I was like moving my arms super quick. I actually remember they give you 30 seconds on stage or they're supposed to. So I practiced this 30 second thing. And when I went on stage, I did it in 17 seconds. Like I was insanely nervous. I was insanely like fast and awkward. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I did not know what I was doing with posing, but I looked pretty good on stage. I was competing against like 36 girls and ended up placing ninth place on my first show. So for me, this is like super exciting. I'm like, oh my God, like I feel so confident. I feel strong. I, the stage presence is kind of addicting. The process of getting in this really good shape. I'm around all these beautiful women who are like strong and fit. And they went through the same journey I went through, which is like to diet every day and to work out every day. And it was just crazy. I just felt like I was in my zone of people. Like this group of people, all of these people you know, they recognize the same, they have the same body style like with muscles and muscles in your legs and your arms. and they're fit and they're strong. It was just, it was insane. I found my like little tribe, you know, I found my tribe, my niche, and this became like an addiction for me. So I was like, that's it. I got ninth place. I've got to look up all the other shows around me and figure out how do I get to the next stage? How do I work my way up from ninth place to first? How do I get my pro card? All these things. So I was living in Connecticut at the time and they had every single state of this federation had its own show. And so I like basically looked them all up. There was one in Rhode Island, New York, Boston, Montreal, the whole East Coast, I was basically signing up for all these shows. So as soon as I got that ninth place, I'm like, that's it. So I start signing up and I'm doing the same 
the same meals and the, I think like halfway through the next contest prep, they call it contest prep, which is like your, your diet and your training regimen that you have to follow all of your vitamins, the, how much water you take in, how much cardio, how much lifting, uh, halfway through my next contest prep, I was like, coach, seriously, dude, like I cannot with all this tilapia and chicken. And like, this is just whack and boring and disgusting. So I remember he was like, okay, are you ready to switch to like, like counting macros? And I was like, what do you mean? Am I ready? He's like, listen, I ever, you know, you got to put these people, you know, got to put everyone initially on this, this specific diet because it, it's, it's what works for everybody, even if it doesn't, you know, taste good or have variety. But once you master that and you understand how much to eat and you're following it and you can actually be regimented, I could, I could put you to macros. I was like, okay, what's macros? He's like, listen, you're going to track your meals. I'm going to give you the, your amount of carbs, proteins, fats, and you're going to track them using like an MyFitnessPal app and you're going to be able to have flexible dieting. So I was like, what's that? He's like, basically you can, you know, have a banana instead. You can, instead of oatmeal, you can, you know, you can swap foods in and out to the point that if you want to be super strategic, you could figure out a way to have an Oreo every day by eating the right macros and having the right protein and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, this is, this is insane. I'm going to do this. So that was another thing I got obsessed with is I not only could I control my body and how it's changing and transforming, getting stronger and leaner, now I can control my food intake and I can make sure I'm still getting leaner and stronger and fitter while eating some of the foods that I love. So that that became like my next thing. It was like type A. I was just like, I can follow this. So I started tracking that. Same thing. I was track I was at the hospital three 12 hour shifts a a week. And then I'd pick up another shift, fourth or fifth ship at the other hospital to pay for the all this because you're paying for a coach. Sometimes it's like 300 bucks a month. It might even be more than that. Um, and then on top of that, now you have to start signing up for shows. The entry fees are like 250 minimum just to enter. Now you're paying for your your food. You're paying for your uh, posing coach if you get one. You're paying for your bikini. So this this hobby adds up pretty quickly. And I I mean I was very addicted. I it was very very exciting for me to do. I was it was like such an accomplishing task, but it became pretty like pretty pricey pretty quick. So that's why I kept picking up shifts at the second job to pay for it. But uh, yeah, long story short, what did I do? I did get I did get in the best shape of my life. And like I said, I went from 140 to 118 and I was addicted to these, these results. The second show I did, I think I got third place. I drove all the way up to Montreal. That was, my, I think I was in my second show. I literally had just finished three 12 hour night shifts. And I was like, I have to go to the show. And the only way for me to go is to like drive right after and go go perform on stage. I can't remember if the show was that day or the very next day, but either way, I didn't get any sleep. I drove straight there, you know, and I went to the next show. And I think I got third place in one, second place in another class because they have different classes. I had like bikini class. I think I got like third place and fitness class. I think I got like second. And then I was like, okay, this is this is awesome. I'm moving my way up the ladder. Like every show I do, I'm getting better. Every every class I compete. So it's super fun. And I'm like I said, I'm still surrounded by these really inspiring people. Like even the girls winning in front of me, I'm like super inspired by them. Like their bodies that they've built and the hard work that they've accomplished and all that. Like I just have like mad respect. So like I really, it was very exciting to be part of this new community. So then I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm on to the next show. And the next show I think was like, I think I did New York. Um, and this, and you guys, the time frame between these shows is pretty quick. Like I did my first show in April. No, I did both shows in April. The first and second were in April. The next show is in like, I think I want to say June or July. Yeah. The next show was in June and the sh show after that was in July. When I did the June, which I think was New York, I got, I think it was either third place or second place. Now, mind you, in this particular federation, and I'm not going to state which one, I, I, getting third place on the stage, almost everyone gets their pro card. So I had watched many shows. I, I always kept track of all the social media posts, and every single time they post the winners from first, second, and third place, everyone in the short class gets a pro card, first, second, third. And then in the tall class, they don't. So I was considered tall, and I was like 5'5", five, five, I think 5'5". Five, four was like short class and five, five made you up in, in the tall class. And I kept noticing, obviously I have to compete in tall class cause I'm that hot, that tall. And they were like, they kept, it, I would get like second or third place and no pro card. And I was like, yo, what the heck is going on here? Like I'm, I'm, I look the way I look. I'm, I'm, you know, they pull me out and put me in the, you know, the second or third place. 
and they're not giving me my pro card. But in the short class of the very same show, they're giving pro cards out. I was just like, dude, this is so discouraging. It would make me so angry, it make me so frustrated. It was super difficult for me to hold my face on stage and like be like, oh yeah, you're putting like a, you're putting like a, um, you know, a champ, like what are they called? Like little, not, not a trophy, but putting a little necklace on. And uh, you're getting the ribbon, you're getting the place. And I'm just like, dude, I know I deserve the pro card. What the heck's happening here? So anyways, I talked to the coaches, I talked to the judges, and I'm like, what, what is, what's missing here? Does my stage presence suck? Like, do I have a terrible bikini? Like, does my ass too small? Like, what, what is going on? Like, I'm tripping. And I remember, like, the coach was like, oh, yeah, you're doing pretty good. You have a good body. You have good stage presence. There's nothing really wrong. You know, I was like, no, tell me what's wrong, because if it's something wrong, I can fix it, and I can get better next time. I'm very, very competitive, and I'm very, very, like, I'm very good at, like, seeing something and fixing it, making it better. I like to, I like to be in constant state of progress with myself. So I actually, if I ask for criticism, I, I can take it, I can handle it. So I was looking for it and I couldn't get it. So I'm like, dude, what the hell? So like, listen, do one more show. Mind you this year, I literally had like a road trip. I think it was like a California road trip planned for like two or three weeks in the summer. And they're like, you do this one more show. I think it was like Boston. And like they do this one more show which was a, a month after the previous show I got in second place. And they're like, you're going to, you're going to get it. You're going to get your pro card. So the judges of this federation are telling me one-on-one, -on -one, do one more show and you're going to get your pro card hands down. Like your body's sick. You just need a little bit more conditioning. I was like, okay, cool. Got it. So I trained for this show while on the road. And mind you, I follow all my macros. I didn't cheat with meals. I had I had, I literally ran every day I was supposed to run. I lifted weights the whole time. I did not miss a single workout and it drove my husband crazy at the time, but I, I did it in, in 30 days. And I even looked better than the previous show. I look insane. And so I'm stepping on stage. Next thing you know, I get second place, tall class, no pro card. I'm like, dude, what the hell is going on? Am I hated? Like, do they hate me? Like, am I ugly? Do I have a bad face? Like, what is going on here? And I, I remember even that show specifically. I could show you guys pictures. I pro if you guys want to see them or anyone requests them, I'll post them on online. But there's no question. Like I'm a very humble person. I when it comes to like losing to someone who deserves it, like I'm like, dude, mad mad props to that person. Like I'll congratulate you. I'll hug you. I'll, I'll literally even celebrate you, even if you beat me. Um, I'm a very good sport about that kind of thing. And I looked at these pictures and I'm like, dude, I, I can't even tell you. Like. It was no comparison. I just have to show you guys so you could assess for yourselves. And I and I found out the next day that this girl who got first place and her pro card, and I got second place and no pro card, she was the best friends of one of the judges. And they post on social media, and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad my best friend won. She got her pro card, da, da, da. And I was like, oh my God. Okay, now I'm starting to get it. Now I'm starting to get it. Just like anything else, sometimes, I'm not saying every time, there are definitely people who have won who deserve to win, and there are definitely people who have worked their ass off and deserve every amount of first, second, third place or pro card. I have friends like my friend Alex just now got his pro card. He absolutely deserved to win. And I am a big advocate for cheering anyone on the wins. Like I'm never gonna be like, oh, you shouldn't have deserved to win. But I will say, in my experience, I've experienced some level of politics involved in the fitness industry. And I saw this was an example, you know, this girl with the conditioning I was in that, that day, she didn't deserve to beat me. And even if she did beat me, if she got a pro card, I most definitely should have gotten one because I was in better conditioning. So anyways, long story short, uh, yeah, that dude, there's some politics, dude. I could tell you, I could tell you stories if you guys want to hear, but I, the thing is, this journey for me, this journey was so amazing. And this federation, I will give them props and credit where credit is due because I built up so much self-confidence about my body, how to get in the shape I like. I learned diet, I learned discipline, I learned training. I learned over time, I started to learn how to actually pose with different posing coaches. I pushed myself, I was challenged, I progressed. So I'll give that, feder I'll give all federations credit because at the end of the day, it is a very, challenging, difficult journey to go on. And the level of self-accomplishment that you achieve, even if you don't win or don't get your pro card is pretty astounding. There's very little things that are that challenging, but I will also say it can be highly, highly discouraging for people who work their ass off and they do deserve certain things and they don't get them. I had a couple friends myself. I, I mean, I made friends with a lot of the girls in that industry 
I, I was very much like trying to make friends with everyone and we would work out together, we would pose together, we would do little posing camps. And I would just say, I, I, I understand their frustration when they didn't, wouldn't place. So I'll tell you kind of like how my progress went from there. So like I said, fourth show, no pro card. I'm like, that's it, coach. I don't know if it's you, if it's me, I gotta do something different. I'm not winning, I gotta win, I got that bug. So I decided to hire a new coach for my fifth show. This coach was one of the lead coaches for girls winning. And I was like, that's it. As long as I have the right coach, that's it. There's no way I can't win or get my pro card. So I signed up. I think I did the time between those two shows was like from July to November, we trained together. I trained all summer and, and I finally got my freaking pro card, dude. I was ecstatic. I got first place, got my pro card, five shows in. <laughs> A million second places in, and I finally got it. And I was like, dude, this is it. I got this. I felt super accomplished. And I was like, okay, that's it. Now I did it on the amateur level. It's time to go pro. It's time to compete on the pro stage. And uh, I know what I'm doing. I got the right coach. This coach is amazing. I will say each coach can be so much different in, in their approach, and it can be a huge difference on your conditioning, how you feel, your mood, your energy levels. Like this coach that I hired, like I absolutely hand down will always – give him props because he just, he freaking, he freaking killed it. And every girl he works with and every guy he works with, he always gets them in proper conditioning and he feeds them enough food and he gives them cheat meals. Like it's, it's very regimented. It's very good. I kind of was mentored under him and learned that style of training. And I help my clients a lot with that too. You know, obviously you guys know I'm NASA certified personal trainer. I train thousands of clients. I've been training people online for about 10 years and I do six week fitness challenges. It's a huge passion of mine to get people in shape and help them get like their dream body. And I, I learned a lot of my, my techniques, my strategies, the diet, the coaching from him um, and all the times I trained with him. But yeah, so we did this and I get my pro card with him. And the next thing you know, I'm like, that's it. I gotta go to the pro stage. So from November when I got my pro card, it was I think April that I was gonna step on the pro stage. And I'm like, okay, this is this is big, this is big. This is like my dream. Like I just I always thought that I could be like the queen or you know, the fitness queen in my bikini class. And I was working my way up this ladder and it just felt like one thing after another, I'm working my way slowly, steadily up. I mean, I did the most, guys. I I promoted this federation on my Instagram at every chance and every post that I could. I networked with everybody in the federation. I worked with people backstage. I helped volunteer at a lot of the shows. I mingled and networked like crazy. Um, I worked with the, the same posing coaches. I worked with the same, you know, the federation has their own like people that they work with. And I tried basically hustling with all of them, the posing camps, the fitness camps, the, all of it. And I was determined. So. There, next thing you know, I, I literally train through the holidays. So it's like November and then the show is in April, the pro-am show. So finally I step on pro stage and I'm like, dude, oh my God, if only I could win. And I think I end up placing fourth place out of like over 30 or 40 girls from all over the world. So this was pretty epic, man. I'm not gonna lie, looking back, I mean, back that day, like I needed to win, like I wanted first place or second place and nothing else was gonna actually make me happy. But looking back, knowing how hard contest prep is, knowing how hard I trained, like I kid you guys not, fourth place is amazing. So I'm super happy with that. But back then I was highly, highly competitive. And I think just because of the obstacles I kept running into, I was, I was like a little bit discouraged. And so I got fourth place. I met the girls. I got first, second, third. They all killed it. I'm friends with most of them. And I didn't feel like I was screwed over at all at that. I really do think that was a really honest, an honest placement. But yeah, at that point, guys, I've been doing shows back to back for a year. Like I hadn't taken any time. I didn't take time off for my vacation. I didn't take off for a single holiday. I'm talking, I didn't drink. Like I was super strict with everything and it paid off. But I was also like, dude, I need a break. I've been doing this for a year and a half. I just cannot keep going. I think I need to take a little break. And I end up taking, I think, two years off from competition prep. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go back to that a little bit because I didn't quite tell you guys everything about kind of like the politics. You know, I heard since then, I'm not gonna tell you guys when, I've heard of another fellow social media star. I think she was around eight or nine million. Not gonna name any names, but just so you guys are know, um, the Federation offered her like over $10,000 to compete with them and promote their promote their federation. One girl was offered that. Another large social media star around two or three million was offered, uh, I don't know how much money, but she was also offered money to come compete on their stage and win. 
I've I've actually heard this story from like five or six girls because you know when you work in the industry you guys talk and you hear things and it, it was a very obvious like the girl that did the eight or nine million the girl with eight or nine million followers she literally had no contest prep posts whatsoever she posts every single day and then all of a sudden she just like steps on stage and it's like oh I won okay back to normal and it was just really interesting because she has an amazing body amazing face gorgeous girl. But I was just like, damn, I know how hard people work in this industry. Like people are training sometimes for a year, uh, definitely at least several months of their life where it consumes their whole life. So I was just like, this is a little shady, man, like that people could just get paid to win. Um, and I remember back when I was trying to compete, I, I think I had like 100,000 followers. No, I had like less than 100,000 followers when I first started uh, competing. And I remember I was promoting for obviously for free, I'm promoting the Federation. And the thing is with Instagram, I don't know if you guys know, when we make posts, even micro influencers, people less than 100,000 followers, they get paid by companies to make posts. So when we when we tag something, whether it's an actual tag, a mention, a hashtag, we collaborate, that all is usually paid for, like a paid collaboration. So when I was tagging this Federation for free, Mind you, I loved the Federation, but I never got paid for any of it. And I never got, like, clearly I wasn't getting my pro card either. I remember when I hit 2 million or 3 million followers, I was still with the Federation. I They kept reaching out to me saying, hey, why don't you post your, um, why don't you post your, uh, why don't you post our, our uh, programming? You have to post a link to our paid programming. And I was like, you know what, I, you know, I don't work for you guys directly like I'm an athlete but I have to pay for everything here I'm paying for the entry fees we're paying for you know the makeup the tanning the the bikinis everything and you guys also want me to promote your content which you're making money off of you're making money off of ticket sales you're making money off of the paid programming you're making money off of all these things and you want me to do it for free when I have millions of followers I'm advertising to. So I wasn't trying to be like stickler about it, but I was like, listen, what the fuck? If you want to use my promotion, then at this point now that I've been giving you free promotion for up to 3 million followers, but now I hit 3 million, I think I deserve like a little bit of kickback or something. And they're like, no, we're not gonna do that. You need to post our thing. And if you don't post it, don't plan on, don't plan on placing. So I was like, okay, two parts of me are battle here. I literally want to win and I know that like maybe strategically if I post them and do everything that they say to do, like use their hair, use their makeup, use their tan, that I could win. But I was also kind of like butter, like, okay, who are you guys to say you demand to post on my page when I'm getting paid by sponsorships for, for the links that I post? So I was a little bit like, I just felt like it was unethical. I felt like it was messed up. And I found this out before I found out that they're paying other girls to to win, <laughs> they're paying other girls to come and compete with them, S compete one time, not like five or six shows like I'd done, but one time and then they they win and they get the, the pro card and the crown and everything else. So I was just like, dude, this is so unfair. So that's my particular story. Like I said, if it's a bucket list for you to compete, I highly recommend it, but always make sure you're doing it for your own reasons because I did it specifically to win and win fair. I did it because it was like me getting in the best shape of my life and helping promote and it was helping with my fitness like modeling career, which I did end up transitioning a lot of my my fitness body into a fitness modeling career where I was getting sponsorships and stuff. So if that's something you're looking for, then yeah, use it. But I will say, do not be surprised if there's politics involved because I've heard stories, not just this federation, but all federations actually, that there have been cases where certain girls are winning because of the sponsorships that are being promoted and they want them to win. Certain girls are winning because their boyfriends are sleeping with certain people or certain judges. You know, like there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And I remember another one another one other thing that happened that I was like, "Holy crap." I was watching one of the uh were one of I was watching one of the final events of the year and they have a paid programming advertisement and i'm watching it live now mind you it's live so when they have advertisements promoting it beforehand that content had to be generated before that day or at least that morning or something and these girls haven't walked on stage yet right they haven't competed they have like 10 or not like 9 or 10 in the morning is when they get have judging and then they have the 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 final show at like five or six o'clock. But either way, the paid programming had to be shot ahead of time. So you're watching paid programming and there's advertisements of these girls wearing crowns and walking out and spinning and doing their little thing. And I'm like, I know who these girls are and they haven't competed yet. <laughs> like what the hell? 
So you're, I'm watching this. I'm paying attention. I'm really picking up on it because I genuinely loved this federation and I genuinely wanted to win and I genuinely felt the drive for this like healthy level of competition and feeling like, okay, when people win, I want it to feel justified, not like that there's some other way that they won. And I remember seeing this and I even heard from another one of the girls that competed because she competed that year. I'm not going to say names, but I do know a girl that competed on the pro level that year. And she was like, yeah, these girls were fitted for their crowns before they even walked on stage. So they had prearranged who's already going to win. Now, dude, I, that is just so not fair. That Nothing about that's fair. And the fact that you know it's true is because the paid programming showed all three of these girls in their crowns during the promotion and during the advertisement, during the commercials of the live event. They couldn't have gotten that content without it. So I'm like, oh my God, this is so discouraging. Now, mind you, all three of these girls look freaking phenomenal. Phenomenal hard bodies. They definitely earn these bodies. But it's just not fair to other girls who are walking on stage, they think they have a real chance at competing and winning and being, you know, compared against the other girls to find out. It's kind of a, it's kind of buzzkill. It's kind of like a dream killer to be like, it, you guys couldn't have made it more obvious <laughs> that these girls were pre-hand selected. So anyways, I just, it's a discouraging. I've also heard other stories, some girls like getting contacted by certain owners to come meet up and like, work on their fitness or work on their bodies or work on their posing or just like meet the owner for fun. Like who knows what the heck's happening? I have no idea, but it, these things happen guys. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie. Now, all that set aside, there are definitely humans that work, train their asses off. They work their asses off and they deserve every single bit of that medal. And every, that's the word I was looking for earlier, medal. I called it a necklace. It's a medal every single bit of that medal, every single bit of that, you know, uh, trophy. So, and, and like I said, it gives you something, right? You, you are, you, you earned your own body. You get to walk around with your own body. So that Federation gives you something in that way. They, they give you this, you know, golden carrot to chase and you chase it and you get it and you find out, you find out the grit inside of you. You find out the discipline inside of you. You find out the very hardcore beast that lives inside of you. So, like I said, I will not shame these federations for what they do because what they do is a freaking phenomenal service for us but what i will say for any girl or guy that has competed and they found out some level of like wait what the hell the shadiness that i feel you on that like i was very discouraged that's another reason i had to take two years off i had the buck bug man they call it the bug i probably would have competed every single year for like five or ten years because i loved the rush of getting strong. I love the rush of getting new muscles. I love the rush of people complimenting my muscular body because for the first time in my life, even on Instagram, this is why I fell so in love with you guys on Instagram. You guys gave me confidence about being a somewhat like less feminine woman. Like I think there was like a huge trend like Paige Hathaway started on Instagram where it was like, f you know, feminine is sexy and muscles are sexy and muscles can be feminine. And that was the first time ever that I had witnessed in culture that muscles on women can be sexy, they can be feminine, that, like that you can actually embrace your body style. You know, some people have different body styles and you know, heavier girls might embrace the like the fit curvy life or maybe the curvier life and find someone who inspires them to, to embrace that body. I needed to find an outlet to embrace my muscular body, my more masculine body. And through that, I, I gained a lot. Like, dude, I, I gained like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. When I was at my heaviest, I went from 118 of, of like solid muscle, probably around like 12% body fat to 145 of like 15% body fat. Like I was solid muscle. I gained a booty. Like, I mean, I went from like, probably like a 20, no, I think I went from like a 30, 31 inch booty to like 30, 36, 37, 38, it, you know, you can gain a lot of inches when you, when you train and you lift heavy and you eat right. So I was pretty addicted at this point to the level, like the control that I had over, you know, just falling in love with your own body and falling in love with having that sense of accomplishment. So that was really big. And, you know, at the same time at work, I started having coworkers are like, Hey Lauren, I, lo I love how you're looking. I love how you're training. Like, can you help train me? So then I would be like, absolutely. So on the side, I would do this as a hobby. You know, I start training people. Next thing you knew, I, I could help almost anyone with any body style. I knew, I knew the diet, I knew the regimen, I knew how much to eat. I knew what types of foods and everything. And it became like this passion to help other people find their confidence, like find their inner sexy, find their inner like strength and fitness. And so that became a huge thing for me. 
And I was like, damn, I can help anyone. And I actually started like a side hustle of, of online personal training. And I would literally be at work, like working night shift and I was done charting and it's like, between three and five in the morning, there's not a lot to do, everyone's sleeping. And I would be online creating new meal plans for different people and talking to clients and starting challenges. And that's how I transitioned. It was, and next thing I knew, my Instagram was popping off, like fitness became like a fad. People were following people for fitness training and like Fitspo and all this, like the squat booty that came a new thing. Like instead of just having to feel like, oh crap, I'm a skinny girl that can't look different. I know I can get thick legs and thick booty and blah, 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 blah. So it became really exciting. And at the same time, I developed a second hobby, which transitioned to a new second career because now people are actually getting confident. And that's the other thing I loved about it is it was like these people, like this was a way to get healthy and get fit and get strong and, and, and avoid medications and avoid like a lifestyle where you're just deteriorating over time, over age. I actually started to see like lifting and following certain type of you know diets as a way to age gracefully, age strong, age more naturally. And it made me less afraid of aging. Because I think we all kind of at some point in our life are like, wait a minute, I'm going to start freaking out. I'm getting older. I'm going to look a certain way that I don't want to look. And this empowered me and empowered others to feel strong, young, happy, and fit and healthy even as you get older. So that was really cool for me too. But yeah, that's kind of my fitness journey, guys. Um, I told you a bunch of those. <laughs> yeah, I think I shared all of the, I have a f couple more, but I'm not gonna completely give everything out. Oh, the other thing I found out when I was competing, guys, I never used steroids. I had an amazing coach and I legitimately didn't even know other girls and guys were using steroids on stage. I've since found out, yes, there's definitely people that do. I actually don't have anything against anyone that does. I think anything you put into your body is your choice and your choice to do. And as long as you're doing it with a lot of knowledge, it's just like anything you put in your body. Dude, if you take uh, medications, you better do a hell of research on what you're doing, chemically doing to your body because there's a mechanism in action, there's risks, there's certain different, how is it like metabolized by the body? How is it excreted in the kidneys? You have to really understand what you're doing if you're gonna consistently put something negative in your body or consistently put something at risk in your body. So as a nurse, my nurse mind has always been like, you know what, there are medications that absolutely help people with things and people put them in their bodies for years and years and years to help with symptoms or other things. And other times, if you're not careful, one medication can help with one thing and then the next thing you know, it's actually hurting another part of your body or putting you at risk for something else. So I've always been very, very like, I need to know what's in my body. Like, what are the ingredients? What is this? So with steroids, I heard about it. I hadn't done a whole research. It's basically its own whole category. Like you could, you would have to be like a doctor of steroids to understand how all these things work. You're using multiple of them at the same time. I became fascinated in it, in just in the standalone like nursing side, that there's like these different chemicals you can put in your body and some of them make you strong and some of them make you lean and some of them make you, your heart beat fast. And you like, you start to look at it like a nurse mind. And I was like, man, is there someone who actually knows what they're doing out there? Because at the time, steroids were very like hush, hush, taboo, like can't talk about it, can't, nobody should be doing it, the government hates it, it's illegal. And I was like, dude, why are we saying that steroids are illegal? There's two things are wrong with this. Number one, medications that are on the market, like pharmacology that are killing people. Uh, we have opi opiates and opiate and, oh, sorry. We have an opiate, and, <laughs> freaking A, I can't say it. We have an opiate epidemic. So why are we, if we have an epidemic of all kinds of drugs that are causing issues with kids and people, and but we're saying steroids are not right, but steroids, most of the people in the community that are using steroids, they're doing a ton of research. They're working with like doctors or basically scientists understand what they're doing, what they're putting in their bodies, how much water to be using, how, like uh, how to check your electrolytes, how to check your, all of your sex hormones. Like they're actually using it in a very scientific, strategic way and for a very specific reason. Now, some people probably, I do know this, definitely go overboard with steroids to the point that they're not tracking you know, their heart rate, their heart muscle, um, they're using diuretics and they're not replacing potassium. Like if you're not careful, like with diuretics, dude, you can literally drop dead. You, It's very scary, it's very serious. So when I started doing this research, I was like, okay, there's always anything you do in life, there's a spectrum, right? There's a spectrum of people that take it overboard and overkill and don't do any research. They don't do it properly. They're not safe, they're not careful and they don't even have like 
a time to recover their body, whether it's cycling on, cycling off. Like there's a whole strategy, almost like a science to it. And then there's other people who do it very safe. They're taking lower dosages. They're monitoring all their levels, their liver panel, their chemistry, blah, 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 blah. So it's very scientific and it can be it can be done in a very strategic way with strategic purposes and like taking care and very much monitoring your health and seeing how you're reacting. So my whole thing with it, once I like kind of delved into the internet, I'm the kind of person you guys know that I'm gonna find the end of the internet with any topic that interests me. So I don't know if the ADHD or what it is, but I will get fascinated. I will just research something for months and just self-educate. So I was researching it to be like, why are people taking this? Is it dangerous? What are the dangers? What are the risks? You know, can it can it help people get stronger and leaner? Like some people genuinely struggle. I have clients that genuinely work their asses off and they cannot get as lean as they want or they cannot get as muscular as they want or whatever. So I was like, is there any benefit to this? If we're letting people take regular pharmacology medication, if people are taking prednisone, prednisone's horrible for your body, absolutely terrible. Doctors are giving it out left and right. Like it literally can lead to like cortisol issues, like where you can't build muscle and you can't lose fat and you don't even get me started. There's so many drugs in the market that are horrible for your body and we're giving them out like candy. And then there's these steroids that we put in this box of it's not allowed to be touched. So I wanted to generally do the research and be like, is is there any legitimacy? So I did the research, I looked it up. Yes, there's tons and tons of people who misuse it, overdose it, this and that, whatever. And I was like, okay, I understand to a degree why certain people use it. Because they, they would, on these forums, they would post like before and afters, people achieving certain results, they're getting a lot more shredded. Maybe they're maintaining their leanness throughout the year. So if you if you see anyone on there that's like, less than 10% body fat, they're ripped abs with with literally like veins 24 seven and you're a female. I'm just telling you, you didn't hear from me, but they probably maybe sort of are taking something. And this is what I found out when I was competing. I actually had a, a couple girlfriends I was competing with and we would help each other train and we'd train as hard as we can. We'd hold each other, like we'd hold each other accountable so you don't drink, don't cheat. You know, we would literally hold each other super accountable so we'd stay on track. And a couple of them were like, yeah, I'm taking this. I'm taking an anti-estrogen blocker and I'm taking Anavar and I'm taking this, I'm taking that. I was like, dude, you are? Like, what is it doing to your body? Like, are you gonna turn into a man? Like, is your voice gonna change? Are you gonna start growing a beard? Like, <laughs> I had these like very bizarre, you know, very extremist views of steroids because I feel like that's what the media and everything puts out there. I had no idea like if there's anything else that it can do, but I did. I watched some of my friends take it and some of them just got like super lean and some of them just got like stronger and a little bit more muscular, but I never saw anyone like full blown, like growing a, growing a penis or like, you know, de developing body hair and all that stuff. Um, and so for some of them, and I, I saw a lot of social media girls start to, bodies start to transform in ways that I could tell you are not able to be managed like that natty forever. That's why they say peak week. You guys ever hear peak week for contest prep? The reason it's called peak week is because no matter what you do in life, you your body typically does not want to maintain that level of extremity for longer than a week. It will. What happens is your body will try to reach homeostasis. What will happen without steroids is that your body's, all the hormone levels start to go off. So let's say you diet down super hard. It's low fats, it's low carbs. You're even restricting your salt, you're restricting your water weight. Your body is in a state of starvation for a period of time. And what's gonna end up happening is your hormones are gonna say, she's starving, he's starving, it's time to up. They have the, there's like several different, um, lep, they think call it leptin levels is that's your like fat hormone when it's too low and your body stores are too low, it kicks up. And what leptin does is it stimulates you insane amount of hunger. So this is what happens to girls after they, girls and guys after they compete peak week, they're freaking starving. They will eat themselves silly and sick after these shows because they're so freaking hungry because their leptin levels are so low. I think I could have it. There's leptin and ghrelin, two of the hormones that are counteracting each other with your starvation mode. One of them is super low and it stimulates you to eat like a mother. <laughs> and that's why a lot of people actually, when they're not trained by their coach to, to let them know, don't eat like crazy after a show. You can't, you'll just rebound with your weight and your diet. You have to slowly reintroduce foods and you have to slowly come off of a diet to the point that you probably should be doing like one cheat meal, two cheat meals and slowly work back up. Don't just go full throttle into fries and burgers and you know ice cream and everything because your body will soak all of it up 
faster than normal because it's your body is protecting you from starving again. It's actually a protective mechanism. So you have to understand how the body works. You have to understand what's going on with you. And my coach would teach me these things. I'd ask lots and lots of questions on what needed to be done. And I made a few mistakes along the way. I did eat too much a couple times after my show. I actually felt super sick. Um, and I could tell you a few other things that happened with my shows. I think one of my shows, I... I don't know if I told you guys this before in one of my previous podcasts, because I, I just don't remember everything I say, but I, I kind of sort of developed a small eating disorder during one of my shows. Now this is highly, highly exposing and very embarrassing, but I think it's worth sharing with people because I've had a lot of clients that have developed it themselves throughout life, whether it's no matter what the cause is, it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty common, more common than people want to admit, but I'm sharing it because uh, yeah, I need people to understand. So when I was in one of my shows, I can't remember if it was before the third or fourth show, but I was pretty deep into this whole, I got to eat five meals a day. Three of them are at work. I would eat one at shift change, one at report, one at shift change again, or one at lunch. And I had these three meals packed every single day. The Tupperware was ready to go. Every All the meals were ready to go. I could not cheat. I could not eat anything outside of this regimen. So I was pretty strict. But at work... In the nursing lounge, all my nurses, shout out to you guys, there's always donuts, cookies, cakes, like all the patients and patient families and, and doctors are sending us stuff like every single day, you're exposed to all this crap food. And when you're on a diet, you guys know this, if you're freaking craving the craziest things. You're craving so much sweets. And if it's around, you will eat it. Like it's 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 a temptation you cannot avoid. It, your body is actually craving it because it wants to eat more because you're in starvation mode, right? Your body fat is getting too low. So it's actually something you shouldn't guilt or shame yourself about, but it happens. So for me, I started noticing that this pattern was happening. Now, mind you, I had done everything in my power to prevent this by coming to, coming to work prepared. I had my three Tupperware full of food. It was like my chicken or turkey and my, and my broccoli and my pickles and my rice and my sweet potatoes and um, sometimes I bring like little uh, protein shakes or protein bars. Like I had a whole thing. And in my locker even, I had a whole bunch of protein bars just in case anyone brought like, you know, sweets. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to cheat. I was had a goal. I wanted to can maintain it. And they kept bringing these donuts. And I remember in the middle of the night, I would get so hungry and I'd walk in and out, nervously walk in and out. And there's these donuts staring at me in my face. I'm like, I'm so freaking hungry. I could die for one of these donuts. And it's always like at the end of my prep. I'm like a couple weeks before my show and I'm like, oh my God, a donut. And I know I won't be able to have a donut for like three or four weeks. And it's just like looking at me and like, come eat me. So what did I do? I ate them. And I would eat like once you start eating when you've been deprived, you will kind of binge or like your body will kind of be like, oh, my gosh, you need that. You need that. It's a very weird thing. I don't know if it's chemical and in your mind or both, but I, I personally experienced this. And this is the first time in my entire life. I'd already done several shows. I'd never had an eating disorder. I didn't have any problems. I didn't ever binge and purge, but in this particular time frame, it came, it snuck up on me out of, out of nowhere. And then of course I was like, wait a minute, you couldn't, you can't just eat three or four donuts. Like you literally just ruined your diet. You're going to, what if you ruined all, all of your prep in one, in like one day, what you're about to step on stage. So I get all these anxiety feelings and it would only happen at work in that nursing lounge. There's no other time throughout my entire day did I ever feel tempted to eat that much food or to purge, but it was always at work at nighttime when they would have this crap. And I remember a couple times I would say, hey, is everyone done with the donuts? And I would throw them away. And I would try to just get this crap out of my face. And, but I would say this went on for about, it was less than a month. It was like every day at work for like two or three weeks. And I remember when it hit like the third week, cause I would have days where I would not binge and purge. And then I would have days where I would go back to it. It was very strange. It, once it came into it, in it, it almost felt like an addiction, so to speak. Like I, 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 I would feel instant regret, remorse, humiliation, and I would, I started hiding it from people, like because I would be like, I don't know. It was just the most embarrassing, humiliating, shameful like experience. And I remember like three weeks in, I was like, dude, I think I have an eating disorder because I can't stop throwing up the stuff that I eat, and I shouldn't be eating it in the first place. And now I haven't told anyone anyways, I remember I called my husband. I was like, babe, I think I have a problem. Like I'm, I'm genuinely afraid. And I called him. I said, I have clients that I train. I want them to respect me, look up to me. And I never want anyone to feel like they can't trust me. I want to know that like my body was achieved through the right methods. And I'd never got into competing to develop unhealthy habits with food. Like that's not why I got into this. And I don't want that to be the reason I'm here. And so I need you to help me. And mind you, this was like, 
I think I'd already started working part-time and I was slowly moving towards per diem because I had already started training a bunch of clients on the side. And my personal training business was making me more happy because I was helping people change people's lives. I was making a little more money doing it. I had more freedom. I could work from remote. So we slowly started transitioning away. So it was the perfect timing for me in terms of I hated being at work. I had so much anxiety around everyone eating themselves with donuts every day. And I was trying to be like healthy. I was trying to monitor what was going on in my body. And I felt like I couldn't get this temptation away and I couldn't be healthy with it around. You know this, I don't know if you guys are like this, but as long as I don't have unhealthy stuff in my house, I won't eat it. But as soon as I put it in my house, I'm gonna eat that little Debbie. I'm gonna eat that cake. I'm gonna eat it. It's going down. If I'm at someone's house or house party, it's going down. And so it was just felt like trapped in this this cycle that it kept happening. And so my husband's like, okay, that's it. We're gonna we have gonna come up with a plan. We're gonna have you bring some healthy snacks, and you're gonna maybe tell, you know, your you know maybe you can tell the staff like let's remove the donuts after a certain hour, not have them there all night or something. So we came up with a strategy, and I had to like literally remove the donuts. And I had I actually started going into um, the float pool nursing because I was like, okay, when I'm floating. I'm not around like these staff lounges as much and it's easier to avoid it. And then I started bringing in like little quest bars and I'd bring in like three or four shifts so that if I had the craving to eat a donut or whatever was in the room, I would just eat the quest bar instead. And that started working. So I came up with a strategy and in four weeks, I squashed this eating disorder situation, but I, I feel like I felt the full effect of it because it would happen every single day at work for a month. And I was like, dude, this is a bad habit. This is bad news bears. Like I, it feels like an addiction, it feels sad, it feels lonely, it feels scary. I feel controlled by it and I feel ashamed by it. And I just remember thinking, nope, that's not why I'm in fitness. I'm in fitness to be strong and healthy. I gotta get back to the basics, I gotta figure it out. And if I need time off from competing to just be healthy again, then I'm gonna do that. So uh, I just wanna put that out there for anybody who's ever struggled with eating disorder and addiction. And I know I did not have it for a very long period of time because I got help and I came up with strategies and I, you know, you can get therapy for it as well. I understand there's a lot of psychology behind some of the things. And I also just like wrote down my goals and I was like, I did not get into competing just to look lean and shredded. I got into it to be healthy and get it, get it in a healthy way. So as you guys will notice on my Instagram and throughout my years, my body fluctuates a ton. So that's how you know that I'm not on steroids because if my body was lean and shredded in like 24 seven, I'm here to tell you that that is a lot less achievable unless you're working out three hours a day. I do know athletes that can achieve it and that they work their asses off. Back when I was living in LA, I used to work out three hours a day and I was able to stay lean and shredded a good amount of the year. But even then my, I would I would get bloat with certain foods. I wouldn't be able to have abs at certain photo shoots because I was natural. So if you are natural, and you're trying to look ripped as fuck or lean 24 seven all, all day, all year round, it's not as achievable unless you're literally crushing your workouts three hours a day, two to three hours a day, or if you have insane metabolism. But yeah, I just want people to know that because there are some girls on Instagram. I'm not gonna name any names because I think that's, I don't wanna shame anyone. I actually respect everyone in the fitness industry. I think you have to have a certain level of accomplishment, discipline and achievement to get there. But I will say, don't, do not shame yourself if you don't have ripped abs 24 seven, because even as a fitness model and an athlete and knowing a lot of the other girls that are in that world, it's very difficult to achieve that 24 seven. And if you add any other factor into there, you start aging, your hormones are changing. Maybe you haven't had a hormone panel checked in a long time. Get your sex hormones checked, your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone. Get your whole labs. You should be getting those checked once a year by your doctor to see what's going on because you actually can get some hormone therapy. Men too, you can get your hormones checked so you can actually, I highly recommend that because it's it's something can affect your results. But anyways, I just wanted to share that with you all. Thank you for not judging. Um, I haven't had thankfully any issues with the eating disorder since, but I, it, I think that I had to go through that time in my life to understand what level of shame, humiliation, pain, loneliness, fear that goes into having an eating disorder. Cause now I'm very, very in touch with my clients that have re either been recovering from one or had one in the past or dealing with one themselves. I can really connect with them one-on-one -on -one and, and get them through that process and help them find a healthy, a healthy um, level of relationship with food and workouts. And I've actually had a lot of clients recover. So, 
if you guys are interested, hit me up on Instagram, Lauren Drain Fit. Um, check out my link in my bio, laurendrain.com. I'm also running a challenge on June 11th, laurendrain.com slash challenge. It's six week challenges. I run my fitness app, which is going amazing. It's called Progress by Lauren Drain. And on there I have like a meal, meal workout. I have all the, um, I have a meal scrambler. So you have recipe, video tutorials and recipes of all the foods you'd ever want. You can actually select any meal that you want and swap them in and out on there. It's super user-friendly, lots of variety, super motivating. And yeah, you could, guys can work out with me, train with me, and I'll ha ha be super happy to get anyone in their best shape of their life or just start that fit fitness journey. Um, I actually have a lot of clients that are like repeating clients. They'll start a challenge and they'll do another one up to like five, six, seven challenges. And by the time they hit like five, six or seven challenge, like they're, they're at like their goal body, like they're at their achieved sense of accomplishment. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me and letting me share with you guys a few things that I know on the fitness industry. Um, if there's any other questions or like, like cheeky things you want to know, taboo subject subjects on the fitness industry, I'll be happy to share with you all and be sure to check out more of my podcasts on Spotify and YouTube, Triggered by Lauren Drain, and let me know what you guys want to hear more of. Thank you guys for joining. Have a good day.